I'm visiting with George Bogatuck from Soundtracks about some of the great products that they have to offer on Ron's Trains and Things right now. With 13,000 unique items in inventory and one day shipping, Midwest Model Railroad is your one-stop model railroad shop. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, today I'm coming to you here from Studio 7 at Midwest Model Railroad, and George Bogatuck is in town and uh, talking to us about some of the offerings that they have at Soundtracks. Uh, he's going to show us some of, uh, some of their decoders, some of the features that they have, and some exciting stuff about what's happening with InScale with Soundtracks. So, George, great to have you on the channel today. Uh, why don't you just real briefly tell us a little bit about Soundtracks. Tell us about the company and, and where you've come from and, and, and where you are today, and, and sure. then we'll get into the products. Well, thanks for having me. I'm always happy to do these uh, interviews with anybody because we believe getting the information out is is you know, anything we can do to help make the model railroading experience fun and more enjoyable, we're always happy to do it. So first off, let's talk a little bit about Soundtracks. We're a company that's been around for 31 years. Uh, that started as a model railroad company. Um, the two partners, Steve and Nancy, worked for a uh, marine electronics company in Massachusetts, and he wanted to build, for lack of a better term, build a better mousetrap. He thought he could build a better sound system. So they started partnering together and worked to become the industry leader when it comes to sound and, and technology. We were in the ground floor of DCC and sound. Uh, we were there when the standards were written and we were the primary and leader in the sound part of that aspect. Um, one of the things we are committed to is manufacturing here domestically in the United States. So we do manufacture in Durango, Colorado. So when you buy your circuit boards, you're, they are assembled in, in Colorado. We also do a special quality control. Now the machines do some tests for us. We have a, another machine that once everything is assembled, we'll test the circuit boards. But we take that extra little bit of care. Our technicians will hand test every one of our decoders before they're packaged up. That way we can ensure that when we're putting them in the package, you get a good quality product working the first time rather than finding out that something's wrong after the model's been installed. So we do try to commit to quality. And then of course, pushing the innovation with technology and, and different sounds. I mean, when we build these decoders, we draw from railroader experience. We wanna make sure that we're delivering you a realistic experience that is also fun and enjoyable and easy to use. So, George, we've, we've got uh, some, some decoders here from Soundtracks today, uh, but why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the features of Soundtracks decoders and, and what someone can expect if they uh, purchase some of your products? Certainly. So when you're picking a decoder, we've got a lot of different board formats and different things that you can do and select to make sure to match your decoder to the model. Now, these are different formats, uh, things that'll make it easy to install. Uh, so as you can see here, we have a wide range of models on the table with different sizes. And so um, you can find a decoder that will fit into the model that you're working on. And then you can, will have the sounds that are in there. Now, one of the things with our Tsunami 2, our flagship top of the line product, this is our second generation of the Tsunami decoder. We've condensed a lot of those libraries into one decoder. So if you have a sound you're looking for, chances are it's in the decoders already. It may not be the name. For example, there's two EMD uh, diesel decoders and there are different collections of the EMD 567, 645, and 710. So take a look at the roster to make sure you get the one you're looking for. Um, there's a GE decoder, there's an Alco decoder, and then there's what I lovingly refer to as the Land of Misfit toys known as the Baldwin and others. <laughs> And that's the one that always trips everybody up because that not only has Baldwin's, but it has Fairbanks Morse, Galloping Goose, the mm. Whitcomb. There's the Genset, so the modern Genset switchers. And then that's where we put the UP gas turbines. Uh, so it's kind of a collection of the Baldwin's and others that are in there that are maybe not the, the most common ones. So we put them together. Um, and on our steam decoder, for example, we have all of the sounds preloaded into it. So you have 90 whistles to choose from, 54 bells, 10 exhaust chuffs, 10 air compressors, eight steam dynamos and more that allow you to customize the decoder to match your model. 
And so with the steam, you have this locomotive here, which is a Mikado, you, you know, kind of standard run of the mill steam locomotive, but you'll see things like the air compressor, the uh, power reverse on this side, you see the dynamo, uh, probably an air rung bell and, and so forth. And then the size of the locomotive would be an auger fed coal locomotive. Now, all of these sounds are selectable. So you just simply make a CV adjustment CV stands for configuration variable. It allows you to vary or change the configuration or setup of the locomotive so that that way the decoder will behave to match the locomotive installed. So you make these selections. Same thing, so you have all the sounds in this if you want to model a you know, Mikado 1860s steam locomotive where there is no dynamo, there is no air compressor, there, it's a wood burning locomotive and so forth all the way up to a heavy big boy or a challenger, you can select all of those sounds, including the articulated by simply making CV adjustments. Now on the diesel, again, you have 44 air horns to choose from. Each of those decoder flavors has nine diesel prime movers that are selectable. And then you have 50 bell recordings. And again, more sounds that allow you to choose to customize the decoder to match the model you've installed. Now, over and above that, we've given you audio tools so that you can go through and match the speaker that you've installed inside the model. So you can minimize its uh, weaknesses and maximize its strengths. So something that would fit in some of the smaller end scale models may not be able to reproduce that low frequency. But what happens if it's trying, it can distort some of the others. And so that allows you to filter it so that you get not nice, crisp, clean sound coming out every time. So with that, we have a few different board formats. We're really excited. Ron, I know you, a lot of your viewers are primarily N-Scale. Yes. Um, and so we're really excited to be able to launch more N-Scale products. Uh, this is something that we've always wanted to do, but due to the size of electronics and components and things like that, we couldn't quite get down small enough. So I wanted to show you a few things here on the table. Um, first off is the TSU 1100. Now this decoder is very small, 10 and a half millimeters wide. So it should fit into most end scale narrow hood diesels. That's this one here. That is that one. It is a universal style decoder. So it is a hard wire, um, but it does have all the features built into it. So the same decoder that you would put in an HO model, all the features are in this TSU 1100. So with that, we've been able to offer that from day one. But now with some of the advances and some of the components and the designs of the locomo I mean, of the decoders, uh, we're able to introduce, this one's a KN1. This is the Kato N-Scale uh, 1, which is a wide body uh, decoder. And this is designed as a simple drop-in. You can see the installation here in this Kato F3. And so the circuit board just simply replaces the circuit board that was in there. Now with this kit, you get a speaker, you get a choice of speaker baffles so that you can find one that matches your model. You get a uh, headlight and backup light LEDs, and then you get speaker wires so that you can simply attach in the complete kit. Now the speaker wires, you can cut them short to fit, you can match them, however, the LEDs you can adjust. The circuit board is pre-regulated for LEDs, so you can just wire them direct to the decoder and they'll fit in just fine. Now the wide body, this includes the Kato F units, the E units, the uh, PAs, the F40 PH, the P42s. And so all of those use a board that's very similar and has the same installation process. Now, as you know, Kato models weren't necessarily designed for sound. So some of those speakers installations may still require some uh, cutting of the or modification of the frame to fit it. But the good news is, is it usually doesn't take as much as it used to. Now, one of the other decoders that I don't have on the table, but I do have installed in the Scale Trains Tier 4 Givo is our TSU Next 18. This is a Next 18 decoder that uses that nice little compact plug that you can simply snap into place. Now, in this model, I do have the Next 18 and it just plugs in and then you mount the speaker. Now these mini cube three speakers that do come with the KN1 are available separately. So you can install that inside your locomotive if space is tight. You also have access to any of the other mini cubes and you can mount them. In this particular one, I have our original mini cube, the part number 810154 installed into the fuel tank. And then if you have non-sound options, if you want to do sound and then non-sound, we do have a line of motor decoders. These are the non-sound 
uh, decoders that we have. And this is a universal style, so you'll see the wires coming out, and it's a two-function decoder. And then we also have a version of this that is a plug-in utilizing that six-pin connector. You can just simply plug in. Um, I know the Fox Valley Jevos had it, and there were a couple of other models that I'm aware of off the top of my head um, that use that six-pin. But otherwise, you have a viable drop-in option, uh, universal hardwire, and the decoder is about the size of your pinky nail. So you can see that it should be able to fit in a lot of stuff. I'm excited to hear about the, the, the drop-in board decoders. Of course, there's no true simple board replacement decoder when you're talking about adding sound in most cases, because obviously you have to add a speaker, there's going to be some wiring mm -hmm. involved. Uh, but I know for a lot of guys, and especially in N-Scale, because everything is so small, doing all of the wiring of a traditional decoder is a little intimidating. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've, you've come out with this board uh, decoder for Kato, and I understand you have some plans in the future for maybe some, some Atlas and some other uh, drop-in decoders uh, down the line. Correct. Yep. We, we have looked at a lot of these, and we kind of have some some plans coming up. So this isn't going to be the end of our N-Scale offerings. This is just the beginning. So we're looking at more Kato boards, more Atlas boards, and really expanding the line quite a bit. So guys, be sure to subscribe and uh, check out newsletter and things like that for any new announcements. And uh, as soon as we can, we'll get them out on the market for you guys. And the, the sound in these is absolutely fantastic. I, my first experience uh, with, with a Soundtrack Tsunami 2 decoder personally was recently uh, when I got to to test run uh, Ather and Big Boy on oh, my yeah. way out and did an article on that for uh, for Model Railroad News or a video review, uh, and and it was it was absolutely fantastic. sounded sounded superb. Um, we'll talk just a little bit about programming now. There are a lot of different ways of programming different decoders. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I know some, some guys will program them right through their DCC systems, through their throttles. Some guys use, like to use JMRI. Some brands you almost have to purchase their kind of uh, custom uh, mm -hmm. programmer. Uh, what, what are some of the options and, and maybe some of the preferred options as far as how you program uh, CVs and different variables for your uh, for your soundtracks decoders? Certainly. Um, you can use either the standard throttle program CV by CV or you can use uh, other freeware programs out there like JMRI. Um, just be advised, we didn't write the code for JMRI, so keep our user's guides handy. Now, when it comes to programming, our user's guides are gonna be a comprehensive explanation of all of the features of the decoder. Uh, you can get that as a free download off our website, soundtracks.com, and at the top you'll see a link to reference, and in the middle of that you'll see manuals. So you can click on that, it'll take you to the respective product, and you want the user's guide. Um, the user's guide will explain in English terms, not engineer speak, how to set all the decoders. And this, this includes things like how to select the sound. So when it comes to like the steam locomotive here we were talking about, you have 90 whistles. All you're doing is changing a CV. Now, real quick, I want to kind of back up a little bit in the fact that, you know, when you talk about CV programming, a lot of people kind of get a little nervous because unfortunately there's brands out there that when you change a CV and you put a wrong value in it, you can actually break the decoder or turn it into a paperweight. The good news is, is we take extra time during the engineering process that if you, let's say we take our 90 whistles and you try to select whistle 95, well, you're not gonna break the decoder because there's a safeguard to make sure that it, the decoder understands that 95 is not in the range. And so it will safety net and default back to a value of zero so that you don't break the decoder in continuously looking for a, a memory slot that isn't there. So have some confidence. You cannot break the decoder by changing CV values. If you did, we didn't do our job very well. So we wanna make sure to express that confidence. Now open the user's guide and read through it. It's gonna explain all of the features in explicit terms to kind of help explain how the decoder works, how to set the CV, and then give you some examples so that you can try it out. And like I said, if you program the wrong thing, let's say you're picking a, high, a lighting effect on the headlight of a locomotive and you accidentally hit a Mars light instead of a firebox flicker or something, you don't have to panic. You can always go back and reset it and change it. Also, you have the safety net. CV8 to a value of eight will reset the decoder and allow you to basically start from scratch. Um, now, some of the features I really love to talk about, um, and especially it's very proud to say that we were Model Railroaders Reader's Choice Award winner 
two times in a row for favorite sound decoder with our Tsunami 2 product line. So I'm really excited to share that. Unfortunately, last year, the campaign where we would have put the signs out, you know, was kind of cut short a little bit. So I just want to make sure to remind everybody that we did win it. And there's some good competition out there. There's some great products, but we actually won the award and that's because of you readers like you. So we appreciate that. But a lot of the features that we have built into the decoder, for example, in our steam decoder and our diesel, we have a feature called reactive dynamic digital exhaust. Uh, we just simply call it dynamic digital exhaust or DDE. And what this does is this will read the load on the motor and adjust the intensity and the tone of the exhaust chuff, or in the case of a diesel engine, the diesel notching based on what the locomotive is doing. So when you're coasting along on flat level track, you'll hear that chuff come into play. But then as soon as you hit that grade, you're gonna hear that chuff intensify and get a little louder. And the idea behind it is you're seeing the simulation of that engineer having to adjust the throttle or change the Johnson bar to maintain speed going uphill. And then same thing, when you crest and start going downhill, now you have that train pushing against the locomotive. And so you'll hear that chuff back off to almost a full drifting. And there's a short calibration process to make sure the decoder knows the motor's capabilities. And then we'll use that as a reference to uh, use the, to adjust those sounds accordingly. And like I said, you have that in the diesel. So when you hit and counter that grade, you'll hear that diesel engine get louder and you'll hear it notch up. And then when you crest, you'll hear it coast and you'll hear the diesel engine drop down. Um, we also have a fully functioning uh, independent brake and automatic, so you can more realistically mimic the work the real locomotives do. Independent brakes would be used when the locomotive is light, on flat level tracks, switching cars, hostling in the yard, things like that. But then when they're tied into the train, you would hear the automatic brake, which is, distributes the braking effort off the locomotive and throughout the train. So these sounds and the settings can be done in such a way that the independent brake will stop the locomotive more quickly, whereas the automatic or the train brake can take a little longer to simulate the thousands of tons behind. So you can see that with the engine dynamics, with the features of the brakes and things like that, including a functioning dynamic brake, you can actually see how we can more realistically uh, experience running a railroad rather than just simply turning a knob on a power pack or having to push buttons to make a lot of these features happen. That is incredible to me how much uh, these kind of features in, in the decoders like this have raised the realism of, of model railroading and, and getting that sense of the fact that this is not just a, a model or, or a toy, but, uh, but a model of a real large machine doing really, really serious heavy, heavy duty work. Um, incredible cool sound effects but i want to talk for just a second about some of the lighting effects too uh we've seen a number of different uh, uh various ways that, that you can set up the headlights uh ditch lights and flashing ditch lights uh and especially in these ho models uh there's some some incredible lights that you've added on some of these uh that uh don't come on your everyday model as they come out of the factory why don't you talk to us a little bit about those Certainly. So with m one of the things I've always been a model railroader, I've always liked lights. And so I'm always trying to push the envelope and see what it, we can do. Well, there was a few years ago, I was watching some real locomotives and saw the amount of lights that are actually on it. Things like step light, courtesy lights, walkway courtesy lights, uh, number boards, truck lights, all of this stuff. And one of the things when the Tsunami 2 came around, well, one of the things I noticed was a lot of the, the models out there would have the number boards equally as brilliant as the headlights. And so you would see this giant, what appeared to be a light bar on the front of some of these locomotives. Well, one of the cool features we added into the Tsunami 2, as far as lighting is concerned, is a on-off Brilliance 1 and then an on-off Brilliance 2, which is basically a constant light but you can adjust the brilliance of the light using a CV. So this allows me to do things like the step lights and the courtesy lights all around the locomotive. And there's two different registers, so I can have my number boards a little bit brighter than say the truck lights or the step lights. You simply using a CV rather than fooling around with a whole bunch of different resistor values, trying to get it right, and then when you get it right, you put it together and find out, well, wait, crap, I need to change that out. It's just still a little too bright. Good news is it's just a CV adjustment with our decoder, so you can go in and make the adjustment. Um, we've also added some other really cool lights. Um, on this 1860s locomotive, for example, they didn't have electric lights. They had oil lights. And 
my options with the original Tsunami was a firebox flicker or I could have this steady, steady solid light. Well, one of the new lighting effects with the steam decoder is called ash pan light. And ash pan light kind of simulates the glow of the coals sitting in the bottom of the ash pan as you kind of see that light fluctuating. And so what we did, or what I did, was I took that ash pan light, assigned it to the headlight, so I can simulate that slight fluctuation of the oil light without having a solid bright light on it. So it's a really cool lighting effect and you can have some creative uh, applications of some of the lights. Um, on our Tsunami 2 electric, we actually have an arcing light. So if you can mount an LED up on the top of a pantograph, you'll occasionally get that flicker as it rides down the tr overhead wire. So that's it's a cool. really cool lighting yeah, effect. That's a cool effect. Um, so yes, there's a lot of things. You can make all the lights directional. You can make them independently controlled. Uh, it's entirely up to you. You've got the flexibility built into the Tsunami 2, and that was one of the goals. We wanted to make sure you can get your models to behave the way you want them to without limitations that we've decided that you can or can't do. That Rule 17 lighting is one of the things that's always been really important to me, and I always program into all of my locomotives. I, I, I want those headlights and taillights on all the time, bright in the direction of travel, dim in the opposite direction, want to be able to dim those. So that's, uh, in, in my opinion, that's a basic function that's that's kind of a, a non-negotiable. So, uh, but th they are really cool. I do want to put just a moment of disclaimer here. Is I've been showing some videos of these various light functions. Just, just know that LEDs on camera look like they flicker when they're dimmed. They don't look like that in real life. So when you see some of those that are flickering, that is unfortunately a trick of, of the camera, not how they look in person. So, uh. One other thing I want to add on is we have a YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, you can go to Soundtracks videos on YouTube or you can link it directly off the Soundtracks website. But I really want to highlight education is our goal. We want to make sure that you're, the information is there for you. So if you go to our YouTube channel, there's a playlist for webinars. And these webinars are taken from on-site classes that we've offered in the past and we'll probably be offering again soon for you to come and learn. But the information is there, it teaches you what is DCC and how does it work. We talk about the fundamental behind the scenes of all of this. It's not just soundtracks propaganda that we're throwing at you. It's there to help you enjoy your hobby. There's one on how to solder. There's one on how to use the various command stations and what buttons to push to make certain things happen. So again, we want to make sure that you're enjoying your hobby. So there's 14 webinars in all. The number 14 is all about consisting and how do you run multiple locomotives together? Because I know that's a big thing, especially in today's modern diesels. We want to run the locomotives together. And the videos you've seen running below are of my locomotives consisted together and they're set up in such a way that they run together as if they're a single locomotive as opposed to a group of individual locomotives doing their own thing, each with their own agenda. And so there's a lot of informational videos out there. Be sure to check out our channel. And I'll put a link to uh, the Soundtracks YouTube channel in the description down below. Be sure and check that out, along with all the other great links that are down there. And by the way, these uh, uh, Soundtracks decoders are available today at our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. Uh, be sure and check them out at MidwestModelRR.com. George, I, I thank you. I, we could sit here and talk all day. I know about various functions. There are so many different ways to, to, to program and configure these. Uh, but you've given us a, a, a good overview. And again, I know you can go to the Soundtracks website. You can look at that manual and it will describe for you a host of other uh, ways that you can configure the lights and the sounds on these locomotives and the various functions that they have. So George, I thank you so much for, for your time. Appreciate you visiting with us today. Well, hey, if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, be sure and check out the links that are on your screen and be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great model railroad videos and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim Lizzie?